right. Hello, everyone. Welcome in. I know everyone's coming in. I hope the chat is open. Let's make sure the chat is open for everyone. Great. And we are going to get started. I'm going to share my screen. Everyone, and welcome to Massive Masters Raising Private Capital. My name is Maria Marks, and we are so excited for today's episode. We are on our podcast now. We have 13 platforms that you can find us on. You can find us on YouTube and anywhere that you stream podcasts. So just start looking up Massive Masters, and you will see all of us here. Just a disclaimer, this is a professional um, podcast, but we do want you to do your own due diligence and make sure that you are um, not just taking our word for it, but actually looking into anyone who is on our show. We at Massive Capital have a very large portfolio. We have over 175 million assets under management and growing. We are located all across the United States. And we have equity, brokerage, property management, development, construction, and education. We've partnered with Realty One, and we are continuing to grow in our properties. We do have one current um, investment that you can get into. It's called Horizon. It is in San Antonio, Texas. There are a few spots left. And if you are still listening and still want to get in, there's still time. Just message one of us, and we will be able to help you today. We have Nate from Directed IRA. Just to give you a little bit about Nate, um, Nate is an executive director at Directed IRA. He is a 12-year veteran of, of the self-directed IRA industry, spending most of his career as an executive educator and public speaker. Nate is a CISP, which is Certified IRA Service Professional, a licensed loan officer, and has an executive experience in real estate and business development. As an investor, private lender, and SDIRA executive, Nate has personally overseen thousands of self-directed IRA investments involving real estate, um, notes, and private equity, stocks, and more. Nate's an expert on self-direction -direct and has been a contributor to the U.S. News, World Report, Fox Monitoring News, and hundreds of podcasts, webinars, and real estate investor groups across the country. He's helped educate thousands of individuals, investors on how to properly use self-directed IRAs, 401ks, and more. Nate holds a business management and finance degree from the University of Portland and was named to the top 100 people of finance by the top 100 magazine in 2019. Nate, we are so excited to have you here and thank you for being on the Massive Masters Raising Private Capital show. Thank you. And oh, there we go. So I saw my buttons were a little delayed there. So thanks for that for that intro. I sound like a huge nerd, but that's okay. Do, that's okay. We love it. We love it. So hey, what you need a nerd every once in a while. Of course, of course. That's why half of us are here. I mean, yes. let's talk about finance all the time, right? Yeah. What what got you into IRAs and what and brought you to directed? Oh, yeah. So that's kind of a funny story. So out of high school, or sorry, out of college, I knew I wanted to get into real estate. I didn't know what that meant, um, but right out of college, I was looking to get my foot in the door in real estate. Um, I got my real estate license thinking that's how you get into real estate. And then I found out very shortly, I wasn't really, uh, you know, equipped to sell houses and, and uh, bridge and cabinets, right? And tile. Right. So I wanted to be on the other side of it, which was the finance side or the investor side. So I got into a career uh, in mortgage finance. So that's kind of where I started my career. Um, I started buying and selling my own real estate. I've been a landlord before. I've had 20 rental properties at one time. I kind of shifted my focus into the lending space. And in 2012, I was recruited by a company out of Texas uh, who was doing self-directed IRAs. At that time, I didn't even know what that meant. I didn't know what a self-directed IRA was. I barely knew what an IRA was. I had one. It was invested in stocks. Um, but I, my interest was in real estate and lending. And when I found out that I could be investing in real estate or even lending out of my retirement plan instead of investing in stocks, which I knew very little about, I my mind was blown. And I thought, how come not everybody doesn't know this? How come I didn't learn this in college? None of my friends do this. Everybody on this planet who is interested in real estate or understands real estate should understand how to use a retirement plan to invest in real estate because you get Uncle Sam out of the equation. So it just blew my mind 
that everybody you know walking on the street doesn't understand this. So I became passionate about teaching it. And here we are, 12, 12 years later, I'm still doing it. I love that. I think you hit it on the head right there when you said this should be taught, should be taught everywhere and everyone should understand it because it's such a powerful tool that we're not utilizing. And I like to talk about it every day. I know you like to talk about it every day, but not yeah. everyone else does. Well, it's fun. And when you really dive into it, what we're really talking about when we're talking about IRAs and, and even self-directed IRAs is we're just talking about the playbook the IRS has given us to eliminate or defer taxation on real estate investments. Now, there's other ways that you can do it, but buying and selling real estate inside of a retirement plan is the easiest way to eliminate taxation and create generational wealth for your heirs through your real estate investments. If you understand how to utilize it, Uncle Sam becomes less of an issue. And if, if, if you talk to any savvy financial advisor, they will tell you, especially when it comes to real estate, taxes are your biggest expense. If you right. don't understand how to minimize it or eliminate it, you will not be in real estate very long because it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you keep. Oh, right there. Perfect. Now, the people who are listening, their, their job, we raise capital. That's what we do. We raise for our properties. And when we're talking to our investors, my top top thing that I get back is, well, I don't have enough money to invest. I don't have 50,000 or 100,000 sitting in my savings account. And I always like to say, well, what about an IRA? And yeah. they give me that look like, I don't know what you're talking about. And, <laughs> and then I start educating them on IRAs and how they can do it. So if I'm raising capital, pretend I, I don't know about this, what am I going to educate my investors on? What types of IRAs are there out there for them? Yeah, so if if uh, if I put myself in the shoes of the investor raising private capital, first understand there's different places that you can raise private money, right? right. Obviously, you can go to bank and get conventional financing. That works for cer certain investments on certain deals, but you still got to raise a majority of some capital. So where do you raise capital from? The largest source of America's wealth when it comes to capital is retirement plans. So there's, and I just looked at the numbers, just just uh. Q4 2023, there's $38.4 trillion in U.S. retirement plans. Now, that consists of 401ks, IRAs, 403bs, 457 plans, but that is the largest source of America's wealth. So if you're out there and you're looking to raise private capital for a syndication or for apartment deal, and you're talking to an individual, realize you're really talking to two people. You're talking to them, the person but you also need to engage in that conversation and talk to them as their retirement plan because they're two separate buckets. And most people don't realize they can use their retirement plan to invest in alternative investments like syndications and apartments. That's one of the beautiful parts about self about self direction. I'll also say this, when you talk to somebody and you open up that dialogue and say, maybe you don't have $50,000 in your bank account because most people don't, but they have several hundred thousand dollars in their retirement plan. The first thing they're going to say is exactly what you said. Well, what do you mean? What, what's my retirement plan have to do with this? I thought I can only invest in stocks and bonds. That's your opportunity to say, no, no, no. Your IRA can invest in almost anything. There's only two things your IRA cannot own, and that's life insurance contracts and collectibles. Those are the only two restrictions when it comes to an investment. So if you can engage them and, and start tapping into finding out where their money is, you'll find that more of their money is in retirement plans. And nowadays, more money is in an IRA versus a 401k, which is good. And we'll right. talk about the nuts and bolts of it as we go along. But it's easier to raise private money from a IRA than a 401k. And we'll talk a little about why, why that is you know, down the road. Right. Um, what can someone do to help um, raising capital from IRAs? Like what's the big, like the first step? If I'm going to raise money, I'm raising private capital, yeah. I'm talking to investors. What's the first step I can do to make sure that I am understanding IRAs correctly? So, and we talked about this off air, and I think the most important thing, and I've seen this over 12 years, the most successful investors that raise most more money through, through IRAs are the ones that are also self-directing their own IRAs. Okay? There's two sides of self-directed IRAs you, you need to understand. One is 
your retirement plans. What are your retirement plans doing? And then there's other people's retirement plans. Now, I think that the most successful investors start first with their own retirement plans. What are they doing to self-direct their own plans, especially if they're invested into real estate? This does two things. One is you're focused on your own tax-free growth and, and how to utilize your own self-directed IRAs. And then once you understand how to do it on your own, it becomes much, much easier right. to talk to other people about self-directing theirs. But if you're just skipping over that part and you're going right to them and saying, hey, I think you should self-direct your IRA into this wonderful apartment building I have. And they go, great, what do you self-direct your plans into? And you go, nothing. I just want you to self-direct. Just think it's an uphill battle. But I think that if you're self-directing, A, you're, you're focused on growing your retirement plan. We could talk about the many benefits to doing that and growing tax-free wealth, but it also enables you to talk, I, I, I think, more easily and more fluidly about the process because you've already gone through the process yourself with your own plan that you could tell people, hey, here's how it works. I know you have never done this before, but all it takes is us to open an account, it takes this many days to transfer money over. This, these are the documents we need when we, when we fund the investment. But if you've gone through it, that conversation becomes a lot easier. So true. I mean, investors ask us, well, how much money are you putting into these deals? And we have to show our experience. So if we're asking our investors to invest with their IRA, we should have one too. Right. <laughs> Start setting exactly. that up. Yeah. Yeah. Now, not to put a shameless plug here, you might be a little biased. I mean, there's so many different entities that you can have an IRA in. And what are some of the benefits of utilizing directed IRA? So when it comes to utilizing us directed IRA, you're really going to utilize us to hold all the investments in a retirement plan that Fidelity and Charles Schwab won't. There's really two different types of custodians when it comes to retirement plans. There's your traditional custodians that hold traditional investments. Nothing wrong with them, but those are your Fidelities, your Charles Schwab's, your Morgan Stanley's. They are custodians of retirement plans, but they only allow you to invest in the things that they sell. Because they're licensed securities brokers. They sell stocks, bonds, mutual funds. So you're going to be limited to your investment choices with them. When you have an IRA with directed IRA, and we have the same types of IRAs they do, our account agreement with our client says, you can invest in anything the IRS allows, but you have to tell us what the investment's going to be because we don't have a menu of investments to sell you. We're not a licensed securities broker. We don't make commissions selling you anything. But when we have a wide open account agreement like that, it gives you the flexibility and the freedom as the client, as the account owner, to pick and choose investments that go outside of Wall Street and you can find right on Main Street. Single family rentals, notes secured by real estate, land, you know, syndications, apartments. All of those investments can be owned in a retirement plan. You just have to have your retirement plan with a company like us that will hold that investment so that it's still considered a retirement account investment and you get all your tax benefits. And we could talk about the tax benefits as well, but that's the benefit so, uh, directed IRA plays is we give you the ability to hold alternative assets in a retirement plan because Charles Schwab and Fidelity won't do it. Okay, so tax benefits. That's a huge hot button topic right now when we're raising money or raising that capital for our investments. What are the tax benefits? Because it is a little different than if someone's going to invest at LLC or any of their own individual accounts. It is a little bit different. So let's share those benefits for investing with an IRA. Right. So the, the first thing is you want to you want to identify that you and your IRA are not the same person. It, by 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 legally, you're two different entities. Me and Maria and everybody on this program, we're all taxpayers. We're individual taxpayers. When we go out and make a dollar, whether it's on our investments or on our income, we're going to get taxed on that dollar, right? That's just the way that it is. Now, there's some tax tricks we can use. That real estate's a great investment to invest in to minimize taxes when it comes to investing with our money. But here's the beautiful part about an IRA. An IRA is not a person. By definition, an IRA is a tax-exempt trust. An IRA pays no taxes. So as you buy and sell any investment in an IRA, at the bare minimum, you get tax deferred growth. Now that tax deferred growth applies to stocks and real estate. So let's say I have a traditional IRA, which is what most people have. Traditional IRA just means it's a pre-taxed IRA. I haven't paid taxes on that money yet. It might've came from my old 401k or my old 403b, but I can roll that money to an IRA and I can buy real estate. If I buy and sell or buy flip a you know single family rental or you know fix and flip or even an apartment building, 
And let's say I make $100,000 or my IRA makes $100,000. None of that's taxed because my IRA is not a taxpayer. I can reinvest all my principal and all my gains onto the next investment free of tax, which allows me to grow my IRA much, much faster because there's no tax return, right? The income of my IRA does not hit me on my 1040. So the money in my IRA grows much, much faster. Now that's if you have a traditional IRA. If you if you go real powerful, right, and real sexy. Yes, I said sexy and IRA in the same sentence. Wow, right? that's that you, was a bold choice there, Nate. Hard to do, right? If you invest in real estate in a Roth IRA, here's the beautiful part about a Roth IRA. Roth IRAs not only pay no taxes on the gains, but if you take distributions from the Roth IRA once you're 59 and a half and you've had it five years, there's no tax on the distributions either. So you can grow massive amounts of tax-free wealth. And I'll give you a quick story about a client that I have. He owns 12 rental properties in his Roth IRA, not owned by him, not owned by his LLC, owned by his self-directed Roth IRA, 12 rental properties. Okay. Now, every time a renter pays rent on those rental properties, that does not go to him. That goes to his Roth IRA. That's income to his Roth IRA. That's not taxed. Since he's above the age of 59 and a half, he takes a tax-free, penalty-free distribution every single month of those rents. It's roughly about $20,000 a month. Okay? $20,000 a month he's taking from his Roth IRA, and he's off the grid. Uncle Sam can't touch him. The next month, he takes another $20,000 distribution, tax-free and penalty-free. Meanwhile, when you look at his annual account statement, his annual balance of his Roth IRA goes up every year. Because when you look at it, all those rental properties are appreciating over time. He is only tapping into the rents. So if you can understand how to apply cash flowing and appreciating assets like real estate in a Roth IRA, you can live tax-free on real estate for the rest of your life. And even when you die, those investments in your Roth IRA don't disappear. They just transition as an inherited Roth IRA to your kids or your grandkids, whoever you pass that on to, and they can live tax-free off the distributions of those assets for at least another 10 years. So we're talking about multi-generational tax-free wealth, and Uncle Sam can't touch you. And that's the dream. I mean, we're we're all here selling financial freedom, talking about the the financial dream of not not having to be a slave to your job and to actually have some passive income that can help you create really generational wealth. But that's the key that we're not we're not hindering on is that generational wealth. You can really pass this on and if they're not 65 or 59 and a half, they can have access to those tax benefits and exactly. distributions that you're talking yeah. And really, when you think about it, it's not an either or two thing either. You should be investing in real estate outside of an IRA and inside of an IRA. But Why do, do you say that? Because outside of an IRA, you get some massive tax benefits, especially if you're trying to offset ordinary income or passive income of you as the individual. So there's a lot of benefit to investing in real estate outside of an IRA. I just always say, don't forget about your IRA. Don't invest in real estate outside of your IRA and let your IRA just sit in a mutual fund. That makes no sense to me. If you understand how to make money in real estate, why not put your IRA into real estate as well? Because that will provide you generational tax-free wealth, but it's not going to provide you income today, right? So your real estate investments outside of your IRA will provide you income today. The real estate investments inside your IRA will provide you income for tomorrow. So you're really setting, so when you're raising capital, you're setting up the stage for them to be financially free, create that generational wealth. But I like that you're saying they should invest both ways to have yes. one that's continuing to grow and one that's going to give them cash flow currently right now, because they're not going to be getting cash flow if they are investing their IRA or their Roth. Right, exactly. So, so what I always say is your Roth IRA investments, if you think about it this way, they're almost investments that you just want to put on the shelf. Right. You want to look for real estate investments that provide cash flow or maybe some a good appreciation, but you just leave them there. Let them grow. Let them get rented out. Let the renters pay down the notes, whatever it is that the strategy is. But let those assets grow completely tax free so that when you're 59 and a half, you've got a big bucket of money to retire on that Uncle Sam can't tax. But in the meantime, invest in real estate outside of an IRA. And this is where you still want to use IRAs, not your IRA 
other people's IRAs. <laughs> because like I said, there's $38 trillion in other people's retirement plans. It's the largest source of private capital. If you can tap into that, you can borrow money from other people's retirement accounts to fund your personal deals outside of your own IRA. And I will tell you this, in my 12 year career, and even at, at Directed IRA right now, we have about $2 billion in assets, about 17,000 clients. Only about 5% of those clients are active real estate investors, like active, like a lot of the people on this massive master's podcast, they're active. 95% of our clients are passive investors with their self-directed IRAs because okay. they work nine to five jobs. They're not, they're not, not door knocking. They're not sending out, you know, uh, 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 they're not sending out offers to buy apartment buildings. They work at Motorola. They work at Lexus. They work at Merced, you know, but they like the ability to invest in real estate with a self-directed IRA. So they do it passively. So you'll find that most people with a retirement plan, they just want to hand the money to you and let you make the money for them, which and is- And I'll a, which take is, it, obviously. Exactly. I would yeah, love right. that. Thank you. Right. And all right. the people on this call will as well. So that's right. a lot of money that is at our fingertips. And I think that's being left on the table because we're so scared to talk about it. We're so scared to talk, to really educate because it's something that maybe we just don't understand. Because I have investors, they'll come to me and they say, well, I'm still putting money into my 401k. How can I invest that? That's a, that's a great, that? yeah. So that's a great question. So, and, and that's, this is a good point that we could talk about is how to identify retirement plans that you can access mm -hmm. uh, of other people's. Right. So if you're talking to somebody and they have a, what we call a current employer 401k or a current employer 403b, basically they're still working at the company that provides them their retirement plan. In most cases, it's going to be almost impossible to get that money moved because they're still an active employee with that company. Right. But once that person has separation of service from the company that they had the plan with, or it's already rolled into an IRA, once it's rolled into an IRA or they've left the company, now that person has freedom to basically do whatever they want with that uh, retirement plan. They can roll it to Fidelity and buy stocks. They can roll it to directed IRA and buy real estate. So when you're talking to people, just understand if they've already left the company that, th that they had their 401k with, most likely that's money you could tap into. If they're still right. working there, probably a little harder. If they say IRA or rollover IRA, as soon as you hear IRA, it's probably you're good to go. You just need to figure out where that IRA is and get that money or get some of that money transferred over. And I will tell you this, back to what you said, um, one of the things that does hinder people, I think, from tapping into it is they they feel like they're begging for money. They feel mm -hmm. like they're borrowing money from friends or something like that. You're really not. If you have good investments, right, if you've got good opportunities, this could be life changing for the person's retirement plan that, you, that you're tapping into. Because most people you'll find are not satisfied with their returns in the market. I just talked to somebody yesterday and she she's got $1.3 million in retirement plans. And I was telling her, you don't have to move everything right now. You could just move a little bit. She goes, no, no, no. I'm moving everything right now because every day I leave it in the market, I'm losing money. So hey, if what's her think... name? Does, do you have a contact number <laughs> that I can't get at? Yeah, I, I wish I could give out client info, but I, I can't. But this is a very, very common statement that I hear from clients is they're not satisfied with their returns in the market. They at least don't understand their investments in the market. So if you can tap into that, you're not a beggar. You're not begging for money. You're giving them another opportunity, uh, an investment that they did not realize that they can have, an investment that potentially can give them better returns, but also an investment that's more real to them. It's right. an investment that they can drive by touch and feel, especially if they're if they're local, even better, right? Um, for instance, I like to, you know, I, I lived in Houston for many years, so I do a lot of promissory note investings. I do I do a hard money loans to real estate investors. The reason I like doing it in Houston is a Houston's a great market for one, but at B, I can drive by touch and feel the investments my money was secured by. That's a very, very different feel than just investing in some nameless, faceless mutual fund, which is I what know. most people do. So if you can tap into that emotional side of it, as well as the potential for greater returns, you'll find that people are more open to investing in that. And you're not a beggar at that point. You're giving them a better opportunity to retire based on your knowledge as a real estate investor. I mean, that was 
that was perfect. That's exactly what we sell every day to people. I, I think people are, are a little disappointed in what's in their 401k currently, or they're saving up and then they see it later on. And it's just not as big as they, as they thought it was. So that's another area we can talk about with them is really educating them on how we can continue growing their money. That's in an account. That's not really that they don't have access to right now. Right. Right. You know, the other thing too, is when you really think about it in crunch numbers, um, the thing that at least I like, uh, about investing in real estate passively, because that's basically all I do right now, because it just fits my lifestyle, right? I want to keep my money moving. I do it through the sweat equity of others, but my IRA makes money through interest payments. The thing that I like about that is it also allows me to, I, I know the returns that I'm supposed to get, right? It's a little bit more predictable than just praying the stock that I bought goes up, right? It's a little bit more predictable. Um, it's an asset that I understand, but also when I get paid back, and this goes the same for anybody that's investing in multifamily or syndications, when you get paid back, you can reinvest the money that you made into another deal, which allows you to compound your interest or compound your gains. If you look at if you look at any financial you know literacy books, they they always talk about the power of compounding interest. Even Einstein said the eighth wonder of the world is compounding interest. So it by understanding what your IRA is invested in enables you to not only make returns on, on a specific timeline, but reinvest the returns on future deals and compound your interest. And if you're going to compound your interest, I say. Do it in a Roth IRA or do it in, in an account that's that's not taxed. If you're talking about your own, but this is an again, this is how we can teach other people about how to retire a lot easier than just investing in the stock market. But it's by taking their IRAs, invested into hard assets like real estate, compounding gains, and I guarantee you, real estate or, or, or retirement becomes a lot more of a uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Becomes a little bit clearer <laughs> than a little dark thing that we don't want to get to. Right. Right. All right. So we're raising capital. We're helping our investors get their get their accounts set up, trying to move them from a 401k to Fidelity or to you guys, really getting them moved over. What can we do to help our investors make that process a little bit easier? Um, I would say, you know, be prepared to educate. Um, I, I think that some of the best capital raisers are also the ones that do a lot of education. So you guys are great. I've been on your website. You guys do a ton of education, including this right here. Um, I think that that really most people just don't know what they don't know. So this at least alleviates a little bit of that problem. But you're still going to, as an individual investor, it, still expect that you're going to have to do a little bit of education to the people that you're networking with. Because 95% mm -hmm. of the people that you talk to are not going to even know what a self-directed IRA is. So you're going to have to at least tell them about what that is. And you do not have to be the expert, by the way. Get them to a point to where they're interested. And then just have them book a call with me or have them book a call with one of my sales staff that we can talk about how the self-directed IRA works, how the process works. Uh, we try to make it as smooth, as painless as possible so that they are happy when the by the time it comes to investing in your deal. But always I would expect, uh, you know, you got to do a little bit of education or at least know where to point them to or guide them to so they can get a little bit of education as well. So we're always, uh, you know, I do, a, we talked about this off there too. Even at Directed IRA, we do a webinar, we do a podcast. I do my own workshops twice a month that talk a lot about, you know, the nuts and bolts about self-directed IRAs. I encourage anybody on this program to attend, but also invite the people that you might be raising money from because you'll find that the more educated they are, the more willing they'll probably be to, to self-direct into your own deals. Right. Hey, Cause we want educated investors. We don't want people who are just, I mean, yes, it's nice when they just hand over the money and we, we just don't need to talk to them again, but we want them to know what they're invested in and be as passionate as we are about these properties that we're asking for money for. Yeah, exactly. Hit the nail so right on the head. We do have a few questions in, in the chat. And while while we're talking about these, um, maybe we can talk about uh, case studies as well. But how soon can a 401k be transferred into a self-directed IRA after separation of service? That really depends on your the current 401k provider. So it's really just about how fast they move. Um, typically, I would say couple weeks in most cases from the time that you leave the company to the time that you have access to move it. Now, some companies will let you sit in the 401k. They won't let you make more contributions, but they'll let you sit in the 401k for a certain amount of time until you tell them to move it. But it's really up to them 
and their timeline as to when they'll allow you to move it out. Now, once you can move it out, then you've got flexibility to move it anywhere you want. Um, and that's when you contact us and we get the account set up, we get the money rolled over. It's a pretty easy process once we get the money in the account. Um, and then from there, it's, it's pretty easy. But yeah, that, that's a question for the current 401k provider. And, and follow-up question is, when you have a new IRA, a new new one with directed, how long does it take from start to finish of start? Let's start let's open an account, finish mm -hmm. the money is is in the deal. So the there's really three steps: open the account, fund the account, invest the account. Opening the account is really easy. We've got links online. You can email one of my staff. They can send you a link. It literally takes five minutes online. You just fill out an application. Your account's usually open by the end of business day or the next morning. So that usually is very, very fast. Moving the money can be, it can be a big question mark only because we have to wait for whoever's sending the money and their time frame. And there's really two ways to move money. Rollovers and transfers. Rollovers are when you're, for, for instance, breaking down a 401k, you're leaving a 401k or you're leaving a job that had a 403b, that money has to be distributed from the plan and rolled into an IRA. Those could take a little bit of time based on their timeline. I've seen some take a couple months. Most of them take probably, I would say, 30 days. Okay. If it's already an IRA, if it's just an IRA at Fidelity or an IRA at Charles Schwab, that's very fast. IRA to IRA transfers can take literally three business days, three to five business days. Once the account's a stat open and funded, though, we work very fast. We work very diligently to get the money out, provided we have the right documents from the client showing us what they want to invest in. So if we've got the right documents, if we, they've got the paperwork filled out that we need filled out, we can send that money out and deploy it into the investment within 24 hours. Okay. So could be fast. Could also mm -hmm. be a little slow, depending on those on those three things. What kind yeah. of fees are associated with setting up and managing an IRA? So th the fees work a little bit differently. If you're only used to working with a Charles Schwab or Fidelity, you would think that they have no fees, but their fees are all tied into the broker finder right. fees, the broker fees, the commission. So it, it's like you see it, but you you only see it on the the why isn't my account moving up? Like I thought I thought the stock went up. I didn't make anything. It's because they take the fees out of the profit. So for us, since we're not selling investments, we don't we don't fee people like that. We are just a transactional and administrative fee fee company. So anytime you need us to do something, and really what when I mean do something, anytime we need to buy an investment or sell an investment, it's fifty bucks to buy or sell. Uh, there's other companies out there that might charge a hundred or hundred and fifty. So we're relatively inexpensive on the buys and the sells. Um, the administration works a little different here. So some companies in the self-directed space will charge you, for instance, like a $300 fee for every investment that they hold, or they might charge a fee based on the total value of your IRA. So what really means is the more active you become or the, the larger your IRA becomes, the higher your fees become. Uh, we don't charge like that. We've never charged like that. We only charge a flat fee for just having an account. And for, our, for us, it's $395 per account. So if you've got a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA, it's $395. If it's got a million dollars of assets in it, it's $395. If you've got 30 assets in it, it's $395. It doesn't matter. It just matters that it's just one account, $395. And we do have a special too. Um, I have a special promo for anybody that, that watches this program or works through Massive uh, Capital. Uh, if you use the promo code MASSIVE150, that $395, becomes 245 for the first year. So it's very, very inexpensive. Um, we don't fee people to death. Um, we like our fee structure the way it is. And I would say I've done the math and I've worked at a couple other companies. If you do two or more investments, you're almost 99% of the time going to be cheaper with us. And we don't try to be the cheapest. That's just the way that it ends up. Um, our customer service also um, provides, a, you know, telling truth. If you go online and look at Google, I think we have got the best value out there. That's just a, you know, I might be biased, but just a bit, just a bit. It's all right. Um, how yeah. much should people leave in their IRA? Because sometimes they'll come to me and they're like, I have forty five thousand two hundred and ninety four dollars and sixteen cents. Right, right. It, it depends. That. Yeah, it depends on what the investment is, I, I would say. Now, first, if you back it up, um, most of our clients have IRAs with us and they still keep their brokerage account with Fidelity or Charles Schwab. I think that that's wise because you should have all of your dollars working 
So if you've only, got, let's say you've got a half a million dollars in an IRA, but you want to invest in this massive capital deal for a hundred, you don't need to move all 500 to do a hundred thousand dollar investment and let the 400 sit doing nothing. I would say, leave that money at Fidelity, just move enough to do the investment with massive capital or, or the alternative investment that we need to do. Now, if you're going to do something though, that has a little bit more moving parts. So mm -hmm. for instance, we have some clients that will, instead of investing in a syndication, they invest in something a little bit more active. They might invest into a single family flip. Now a flip, obviously you've got a lot more moving parts. You've got to pay contractors. You're going to have to buy paint. There's a lot more expenses that ha might have to be paid. And if your IRA is the owner of that property, your IRA must pay the expenses. So if it's that type of investment, you might want to leave a little bit of a safety net in the IRA here so we can pay those expenses as they come. But if you're doing something that's passive, usually you don't need to leave that safety net, like for me, when I loan money out, I don't need extra money in the account. I just loan it out and then just money comes in. That's the, so money comes in. I don't need to send any more money out. So, and we don't have account minimum. So you don't, we don't require you to leave money in the account, but you need to move at least enough over so that we can do the investment that you're looking to do. And that fee to pay for the transaction. Well, I would say you don't even need that because I always tell people, you should not tell us to take the fees from the account. And I'll tell you why. You okay. know, if you're going to if you're going to uh, have, let's just call it three hundred dollars of our fees on your self-directed IRA investment, you have two options. We could take the three hundred dollars from your IRA or we could just charge the three hundred dollars to your credit card. There's a lot more benefit to charging it to a credit card than taking it out of the IRA. As soon as we take three hundred dollars from the IRA, that's three hundred dollars that's no longer growing tax free. But when we charge it to your credit card, right, that's a that's obviously a personal expense. Some people even use that as a write-off to their business. Some people put their favorite, you know, they put their Southwest card on there so they get some frequent flyer mileage. So there's benefit to paying that fee outside of the IRA. I would say there's almost no benefit to paying it with the IRA unless you don't have the money to pay for it outside. So try to pay it with a credit card and you don't even have to leave extra money sitting there for fees. That's perfect. Now, I remember you told me you have a few case studies that you wanted to talk about. I know one of them is a is really about syndication. So I'd love to, you can share your screen and share that for our team. We'd love to hear it. Yeah. And while uh, Nate's pulling that up, if anyone does have any more questions that they want to drop in the chat, now's a good time as well. Let me just minimize it. And it wasn't specific about syndications, but the oh. person that does it does invest in syndications. There we go. And I'll show you exactly, yeah, I'll show you exactly what he does with his IRA, um, and it'll it'll kind of blow your mind, and, and, and how easy it is too. So let me see if I can get this. Now, are you seeing my screen there? Yes, we are. Okay, all right. So this is actually a client of mine. Okay? Some of you might know him, but I can't give his name out there, but because he lives in Houston. He actually lives in Austin, Texas, but he does real estate investing all through Houston, Dallas, and, and pretty much the tech, Texas Metroplex. So he left his employer back in two or the uh late 2000 2009 i believe 2008 2009 and he worked at motorola okay when he left that company he had a 401k that by default 401k is if they're pre-tax roll into traditional iras so this was only about seventy thousand dollars and he was already in his 50s at this time so he knew that he had to get super aggressive with this money and he was going to invest in real estate. He went full-time real estate. He's been in real estate ever since. So the reason I say that is because he made a decision first before even investing his self-directed traditional IRA, but he made plans to do what's called a conversion. He paid the taxes on his traditional IRA to convert it to a Roth. Now, anybody can do this nowadays. And basically what you're doing is you're just getting rid of the taxes before you make the profit. He wanted to get to the end of the road to where he had a massive Roth IRA where he can live tax-free off distributions. So first, before he did any investments, he converted his traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. Now he's got a self-directed Roth. Now with $70,000, you're not gonna do a whole lot. So he, he started to look for creative real estate deals. And this is the cool thing with IRAs. You can use creative real estate strategies and have your IRA as the buyer. Now, what he specifically did is he started going out and he started looking at properties in Austin, Texas, specifically that had little to no equity in them, expired MLS listings. The owners were in distressed situations, but all the properties were in good areas. Basically, what he was looking for were people that he can 
negotiate terms with and buy these properties on terms using the strategy called subject to. Subject to is not a new strategy. It's been around for forever. Uh, and my client has been using the strategy or used this strategy back in 2012 when he first started looking for property. So basically what he's doing is he's solving the problem that these homeowners have where they fell behind on their mortgage payments, they couldn't pay their property taxes. And what he did is said, hey, my Roth IRA can catch up your mortgage payments. I can even give you keys, uh, cash for keys, okay? And I'll pay your mortgage or my Roth IRA will pay your mortgage payments going forward. But I need, I need the property title to my Roth IRA. So by doing this, he was able to buy property with the underlying financing still on the property. So he didn't have to come to the table with cash. He just had to come with enough money to catch up the mortgage payments and give the homeowner some cash for keys, which was about ten dollars to $15,000. So fast forward in time, he did this five times with $70,000. He's got five properties owned in his Roth IRA. Ever since that time, he's just put them on the shelf. He's got his property manager that rents the properties. The rents that are collected go to the Roth IRA. The Roth IRA pay, pays the mortgage payment. This just goes on and on and on to current time. All five of these properties are nearly paid off. Okay? But these properties are owned by his Roth IRA. And once they're paid off, Okay, these are properties that have no debt on them anymore. And basically, seven, five properties were in Austin, Texas, if you know Austin, Texas, are worth conservatively $700,000 a piece. So with his $70,000 initial traditional IRA that he converted to a Roth, by just putting some investments on the shelf and buying property subject to or using creative financing, his Roth IRA will be valued well above $4 million by the time that these properties are paid off. Now, these are investments he puts on the shelf. His day-to-day -day job is raising private capital to fund some of his multifamily deals. But he raises so much money because he shows people, hey, I understand how these investments work. And you don't have time to do what I do because I'm a full-time real estate investor, but I have these good multifamily properties. I have these, I have a syndication. I have a fund that I've set up that are buying investments like this. Would you like to participate and be a passive investor in those types of deals. So this is a perfect example of A, how you can create tax-free wealth, but he took the first step in self-directing his own plan. Now it enables him to go out and talk to other people about investing into his fund and into his other deals. Now he's working both sides of the equation. So again, this is just a, a, a quick case study. There's, there's more details I can go on it, but again, you can use creative financing, creative techniques to grow even the smallest IRA. You don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest in real estate. Even with an IRA, you just have to use your brain. Exactly. Exactly. That's wonderful. And it just goes to show that you don't have to start from a lot to keep growing and have yourself in some financial, get that financial freedom, create generational wealth. You just have to get started. It takes a little bit of education, a little bit of a start, and you can do that. We can help our investors turn their their investments of even 70000 into so much money. If we can help them do that just by educating them a little bit, we're creating the, the dream that we're trying to sell to all of our investors. So thank you for saying that, Nate. And um, how can people get a hold of you? How can people learn more from you? And how can we learn more about IRAs and what we can teach to our investors? Yeah, I, can, I actually have a slide. Let me um, just uh, pull this up real quick. Uh, tell me if you can see my slide again. I'll just skip to And the... for those of you who are listening later, we will be sending this out. It's on, um, it'll be in the show notes. If you're listening on a podcast, it'll be list listed in the show notes. And also if you are listening later from our emails, it'll be sent out as well. Yeah. And this is the, um, if you want to book a call with me, can you see that? Is that yeah. showing up? Okay. Yeah. You just scan that QR code or you can go to our website, directedira.com, www.directedira.com. Um, I would encourage anyone to book a call with me, especially if you need to set up your own self-directed IRAs. And again, I'm being biased, but I, I will tell you, it is a real thing that when you self-direct your own plans, it becomes easier to borrow money from other people's plans. So you should start learning how to do that with yourself. There's also other plans too, and we didn't talk about it, but there's plans that allow you to pay for healthcare with tax-free dollars, for education with tax-free dollars, all through self-direction. So if you want to talk a little bit more about that, 
just book a call with me, uh, scan that QR code. You can always email me too. If you've got a quick question, you don't need a call. You just want to have a quick question. You can email me at nate.herrett.directedira. And that massive 150, that applies to you and your accounts and anybody that you send to us. So if you have people that you are raising money from, make sure they also use massive 150 because it knocks their first year annual fee down by 150 bucks. So it makes it very, very cost efficient. The first year, use that for yourself and anybody that you send to us. Awesome. I love that. And we will be sending this out again. I'm going to share my screen, finish out our presentation. Nate, this has been awesome. You've really given us a lot of key tips that we can utilize when we're raising private capital. Uh, we have a CRM at Massive Capital. If you are not utilizing a CRM when you are raising capital, you are missing out. CRMs can help create that investor database where you can learn more about your investors, hold notes for your investors, and contact your investors. Also, if you have some notes on your investors that might have an IRA and might need some more education, that's the place to put it. If you want a 14-day trial, scan that QR code. It's called Client Harbor. And it is a necessity when raising capital. We have a co coaching program. It's called Pathway to GP. You can register now at massive.capital forward slash coaching. If you're wanting to do your own deals and you're wanting to uh, get a little more education and help, that is another place to start. We are having an in-person event in Dallas, Texas. I know, Nate, you used to be in Houston, but not yeah. in, now you're in Phoenix, but yeah. Dallas, Texas, June 1st. 8 a.m. Central Time, we are going through acquisitions and underwriting. I will be there. We are going to have a jam-packed day of really underwriting deals and talking about why we are looking at certain deals, what locations we're looking at, and maybe some ways that we can start doing deals and raising capital. So thank you so much, everyone. Nate, any last minute option, um, any last minute things you want to share with everyone? Yes, I actually wanted to share. We do also do our own events. Um, they're part educational, but they're a great place to network with people that have self-directed retirement plans. So okay. I just put our next event in there. It's called our Alt Asset Summit. It's going to be here in Phoenix. We anticipate well over 500 people there. And most of the people that are in the room are also our directed IRA clients. So if you want to rub elbows with our clients, you should attend that event. All you need is one or two of those people in that room to be your private lenders or your private investors. And as soon as they're happy, they will spread the word to their network as well. So I encourage anybody to get a ticket. Um, we do have early bird pricing right now. I think it's hundred bucks off. Just email me. If you can't get that, I'll give you hundred bucks off the ticket, but that's going to be October 24th, 25th, 26th here in Phoenix, Arizona. Awesome. I know we would would love to be there as well. So hopefully, Nate, there's a spot for Massive Capital on that stage if you yeah. need some more people. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk. I, I've got you guys at the top of my list. Okay, great. It's a great opportunity to invest, but also and learn about IRAs, but also rub some elbows with some new potential investors in your properties that you are raising money for. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here today. If you're listening later, thanks for listening. You've been listening to Massive Masters, Raising Private Capital with your host today, Maria Marks. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next time.